welcome to Furious Driving and why? Why I hear you screaming at the screen. Are you still sat in the driveway in that ridiculous Rover 216 convertible instead of taking it for an MOT like you said it was going to get last time we watched the car? Well, predictably, it's broken. The reason is a four letter word and that four letter word is pipe. Now before we get going with the video and I explain the problems, just want to say a big thank you to our channel sponsor Diamond Bright who have been uh, relentlessly keeping this channel going with their continued support. In fact sitting in these seats right now and touching these door cards is something I couldn't do without them because their products absolutely transform this car from a seven year cesspit into something quite desirable actually. It's all leathery and nice and shiny and even smells good when you climb in it because the, uh, the cover's keeping the leathery smell in which is nice. Right now I'll explain why this car is still here and broken again. This little bit of pipe lives directly adjacent to the fuel pump. In fact, this is what the fuel pump plugs into and feeds down to the fuel injection system with. This is a fast fit connector, a push fitting designed for speed of use in the factory. Probably intended to be used once, maybe twice in its lifetime of 10, 11 years. That's the expected lifetime of a car. So the other day when I was buttoning things up, ready to get going, and as you know, the fuel tank is very reluctant to leave this car. The fixings are all kind of welded to themselves. They're not coming out anytime soon. So we had to cut an access hatch. I was just getting the access hatch back in place, uh, covering it over so it's nice and solid and safe and everything. And I could smell petrol and I shouldn't smell petrol. And uh, I put the fuel pump on or turn the ignition on to activate the fuel pump. And looking down into the fuel system, I could see seepage. Just a bit, not a lot, not pouring, just dampness around the top of this pipe. And what had happened, having been taken out once to take the old fuel pump out, having the new fuel pump put back in again, then taking the new fuel pump out and replacing it, and then taking it out a third time when Gandalf was here. So it's been in and out sort of three, four times. That's kind of eight connections in and out. And it uses a special tool. I don't know if you can see inside this or not, but there are little metal paws, fingers, that grip the, uh, little ridge of the fuel pipe that goes in there. So you have to push a special tool in that circles around it and pushes those pores out. And the little plastic bits that grip it had finally cracked after being used once too many times. And so it wasn't making a solid connection. And I could have just put the metal panel back over the top. I mean, it's above the fuel tank. It was only seeping, you know, just seepage. And no one would ever know, but I'd have known and I wasn't happy with that. So. I had a bit of a conundrum. What to do about this? So I called in the services, the help, if you like, of Nitro Silver. You know him from that Rover channel where he is a bit of a wizard with a car. Well, certainly with a Rover anyway. I didn't film this because it was pitch dark, it was freezing and it was raining, so there's no footage of this. But I had the car jacked up, back wheels in the air, and, and amazingly, he managed to reach up. And I'd never thought of going in that way before, but reaching up past into the wheel well, and I didn't realize it was such a short pipe either, and he disconnected it. The problem is, these things aren't exactly common. Fortunately, he has got a lot of broken rovers in his garden and uh, took a chance that there might be a spare one that was the same. Now, all I have to do now is get this push fit high pressure connector of this pipe and put it onto this one. Except that one's push fit into the pipe. I can get that out with hot water. This one's crimp fit, so. Hmm. Oh, actually, I have a better idea. I'm an idiot. Let's not do it the obvious way. Let's leave that crimped on there, then take off the good end of this and push fit it in the other end of that. I'm a genius. Then I can leave that factory crimping where it sits. I'm a genius. Right, let's find some hot water. This is probably our oldest saucepan. So when I get in trouble for this, I'll be in less trouble than if I used the newest saucepan, the nice ones. There's logic here. I'm doing this wrong. Oh, yuck, that's disgusting. I don't need to uh, boil this end off. I can just cut it off because I'm not using it again. Right, so I've now repaired the pipe so I can now refit it to the car. There is one minor boo-boo, a boo bet if you will, and that is when I parked it back in forwards, you can't actually get yourself in between there to refit it. There's no room for a jack, no room for a spanner, no room for a me. 
So you'd have to tow this thing out, or I can try and drive the Mercedes. Yeah, let's do that. Well, actually getting into the Mercedes is also something of a challenge. Okay, this may not work very easily. Okay, camera fits. I don't fit as well. At least the cover works. It's nice and dry inside there. Well, once again, oh, my beautiful lights. The Volvo is becoming a tow pig because either the Volvo is a tow pig or the Rover Coupe is a tow pig. Uh, this has got a lash down point, which you probably shouldn't use for towing any distance, but only going about a meter or two. This has got a proper good solid tow hook on the back of it. You can really haul some stuff with this. And the tow rope is looped around itself. So the stress is on the rope, not on the metal hasp just there. And the handbrake is off. Not stupid, well, not very. Sometimes people say, rather unfairly I think, I'm sort of copying hubnut stuff, but in this case I think I was there first towing cars up and down the driveway, one project car hauling another one. Hopefully I won't break any cars' bums like a certain Mr Seabrook did the other day. Well, I've got the Volvo out, so a quick look in the boot. This side, and bear in mind it has been raining yet again, is looking pretty dry now. This was the worst side. Uh, it still is dripping, but it looks like it's coming down from this um, vent hole now, just a little trickle from there. So I need to come work out how that comes apart and seal that up. But the light area is no longer a flood, which is a very good thing. This side, bone dry. It's worked. That's good stuff. Well, that's the end of the pipe going away from the fuel tank down the rest of the car. So I can hook that one up fairly easily in a second. So last night I was working quite late because I was struggling, struggling with these pipes, well this pipe in fact, and these quick release, quick fit clips, they would not quick fit onto that. So I guess there's a slight difference in size between the one that came off and the one we thought was the right one. So in the end, I had to get some new, I had some new luckily, of uh, the right size ethanol safe Gates um, fuel line and using the boiling water in a teacup technique, managed to get those over the, uh, there's like a lump on the end of the pipe, I've forgotten the name for a second. Uh, so that fitted on and it's held on nice and tight now. And so here the moment of truth is, Pipes are connected, so now we can go back to whoops, a functioning, whoops, a functioning Rover 220. Yeah, that sucks. So I don't know why, but it's now gone from a car that ran but had a tiny little fuel leak to a car without a fuel leak, and I can hear the pump buzzing to a car that won't start. So I squirted a little bit of easy start in here and the thing fired up and ran quite happily on the easy start. So I'm going to disconnect the inlet from the fuel filter just to make sure fuel is actually reaching this far down the car. So I can hear the pump still. So the next step in my investigation, I'm working backwards. I can still hear the pump running, so I've disconnected the rubber tube pipe thingy at this end. So I'm letting it hang loose. It's going to fire up the, fuel, uh, the pump, see what happens. So that was weird, that was barely a trickle. It should have been an absolute gush of fuel. So is it out of petrol? I've put four gallons in the thing, it's not gone anywhere. I know the gauge is registering zero, but I thought that was an electrical problem. Right, so I did just whip out the fuel pump again. I've lost count how many times that's been in and out, just to make sure things were actually functioning. Uh, with it on the side of the car, you could hear it firing up, you could feel it vibrating in your hand while the thing fired up from the ignition. I physically moved the fuel gauge sender but it made no difference to the gauge on the dashboard. So either the gauge sender is broken on the new pump, which would be marvellous. So the old pump, the uh, pump didn't work but the sender did. With this one the pump works but the sender doesn't. Uh, or there's a wiring fault somewhere else in the car. Either is possible. But bizarrely, and I'm absolutely scratching my head here because after I did that I put it back into the tank again, left the pipes disconnected, fired it up and there wasn't like a gush of petrol out of the thing. <laughs> which is baffling because the pump is working. I can see fuel in the bottom of the tank but no, no fuel's coming out. The only thing I can assume is that the bottom of this tank is way lower 
the, the depth of this pump or something. So I'm going to go stick a couple more gallons in there. Maybe I've just topped it up and as you used in that drive up and down the drive that much fuel and that's putting it just down below the limit of where I can collect it. That's insane. This car is really trying my patience. Right. I really wanted to start the Mercedes, but it's too tight to open the door still. I've just dumped in another gallon and a half of petrol into this thing. And around the front, uh, so many cans of oil, but I can't actually get an appointment at the tip at the moment. You have to make an appointment because of COVID. I've put a jump start pack on here because the battery was running down. I'm hoping maybe it's just, it was sucking air or something. And that's why it wouldn't fire. So let's give this one more go. Oh, again at last, it's working. I don't know why I feel gauge is showing, showing empty. That is really frustrating, but I might just live with it because at least the car works for now. Okay, let's go with doing some other stuff that doesn't involve that sodding fuel pump. Right, now the car actually runs again for, I don't know, whatever reason it was. Maybe air in the line? Could it just be air in the line? It took so much cranking, it killed the battery, and then the battery needed a boost to suck more fuel through? I don't know. This car hates me, but hopefully it'll start to love me soon because now I've got some bits and pieces, which is what I was actually planning on doing this week. Uh, lovely viewers sent through to um, mail time, post bag, whatever you want to call that, a new rear number plate print, print, a hopefully working Rover radio, which I'm hoping we'll just plug straight in and look at the business in the dashboard, and a couple of uh, wiper blades, which I actually bought down the shop, uh, down the road. Now, the reason I'm changing the number plate print, print which is in the right color, saves me getting that painted, super handy is that uh, when I first got this car, I had to break in, I had to tear the old one off, cut a hole through the roof because the mechanism had locked solid and I had to f manually, damn, shut, <laughs> shove the whole thing across. And I did try and panel bond it back on, but that didn't go so well because that meant it was just sticking out ever so slightly proud of where it would have originally been. I couldn't get the key far enough into the lock to open the boot again, so I had to pry the thing off again. I'm also going to get some new number plates, but not today. So first of all, let's fit the new plinth, which is a really easy fit, thankfully. It's just a few 8mm bolts, and we are laughing. <laughs> I've just realised I've made an error bringing a spanner out rather than a socket because you can't get a spanner in ever easily. Might just about get away with it though. Let's hope. Where are the keys? Let's see if that works. Can I get it in far enough now? Just. Do need to crank that in quite a way. I definitely need a socket. This is way too tight. Oh no, I can just do it bendy-ended spanner to the rescue. Now, when that's tightened in, can I use the key? Yes, I can, the key works. Huzzah. Here, one more test. That does work. Right, let's really, really hope this does work. Boot shut. Boot not shut, yes. Okay, so that's now smart and beautiful. So I'm just gonna nick the number plate off here. This number plate is really horrible. So I'm just gonna glue it on with just one or two of these sticky pads. It's a shame to even waste two stickers on this thing. But I haven't got a new one yet. I'll have to, oops, make a call and get one sorted out in the next couple of days. Well, once the MOT's done. There's lots of things I want to do with this car, but I don't wanna waste money on it until the MOT's done. There we go. There we go, that'll do for now. Job is a good un, as they say. One job done, tick. Thank you, Matthew, for that. That's a big improvement. Now let's have a look at this radio, which is absolutely dead, unfortunately. So I'll put the camera down there. Sorry, it's gonna be a crappy angle. I know someone moaned about that in the other video. Tough nuggies, I'm afraid, because there's no other way around it. So using the old two screwdrivers down the side technique, we've levered this radio free. Let's see what kind of plugs we've got in the back of here. Oh, we've got pre-outs, of course. Because we've got, ah, well, I had an amplifier in it. Just get these little tags up. God, I've fitted so many of these things over the years. 
the various cars. Always change the head units, like the first thing I'd change on a car when I bought a new one. It doesn't matter about braking, this radio is basically scrap. I just want to hurt my wrist, put my hand through there, and turn her out, and that's that. One scrap radio. Oh, it was looked like quite a decent radio once upon a time. Okay, so what rover plugs have we got on here? Oh, okay, big rover plug. And this is, that's a JVC plug just there. Going into, okay, the standard ISO DIN things. So I need to go and get a, a rover adapter for using a rover radio in a, in a rover. How mad is that? Ah, and that's the trigger wire for the uh, electric aerial. So thank you to uh, channel member or Patreon Simon who sent us through to the mailbox address. So thank you very much indeed, Simon. That's very, very kind of you. I have had a quick check online and these do appear to be available from eBay and Amazon for only about four or five pounds. Uh, so I'll have to get one of those ordered and I pretty much turn up till after Christmas now. If anyone's got one then do get in touch because that's the kind of thing that would be extremely handy uh, to get hold of. Um, save putting money in uh, some Chinese retailer. Save. Temporarily, I'll just slide that in there, just not quite in. That looks actually quite nice, doesn't it? That really quite suits the dashboard. That will look quite quite nice. Thank you, Simon, who sent that in. Um, the other job I was planning on doing was once the engine was started, which is now, was putting the hood up and greasing all of the uh, oops, greasing all of the joints. Let's push the button. Up comes the roof. Even though it hasn't got an outer hood on it. Kind of That'll do, pig. That'll do. I'll just leave it idling for a minute so that it doesn't recharge the battery after that. It's going to put some grease on all of these joints just because where it's not got a proper hood on it, even though, even though it's got a cover on it. There is moisture getting through and I don't want it all to, to seize up like the old one did. That's just because this new hood frame that I've put on the car works absolutely faultlessly and I don't want the fact it's getting kind of cold and damp out here in the driveway because water does get through the cover, the cover. I think on strong winds it blows up underneath and it does collect all around the back of the car unfortunately. I don't want it seizing up like the old one did. So uh, let's put that back down again. I'm going to actually fit the tonneau on it I think so that when water the because water does sometimes drip through and I have seen it collected I have seen it collected inside the um, well, on top of the, the hood which is not a good place for it to be I do like the electric hood on this car that's quite cool hopefully this will just do me a little favour in keeping moisture off the hood itself if water gets through in the future in the next few weeks between MOT and hood being fitted yeah, I've got another little task here. Let's go and do the M6 bolts. Sorting out that panel there. Now this isn't getting into MOT stuff. This is getting into making the car more pleasant to be in. This is not ideal. Yeah, I don't know how that broke originally, but it just kind of got worse and worse just by looking at it. This, I think I paid £15 for on Facebook Marketplace, and it looks like it merely slides into the dashboard. And there is kind of a foam gasket, which is slightly falling apart, um, that butts up into. Oh, there you go, installed. The dashboard suddenly looks a heck of a lot better. Oh, it reminds me, I need to sort that out as well. That hinge has snapped off just there. And it had wel welded itself solid in the closed position, but I've been dousing in WD-40 and working it back and forth in the vise with more grips. And the hinge now works, and I just need to go and glue this back together. Right, then we also need to go and put the cover back on the roof of the car. Right, well I've just been in and done a quick mid-roll edit uh, whilst I've been filming and then doing other stuff indoors. And it turns out this video is already the best part of 20 minutes long, which is long enough in my book. So I'm going to call this part one of not making the car MOT ready, but making the car nice.
and work. Because uh, what I kind of realized is that as we're now mid-month in December, uh, if I take it for an MOT next week, which is Christmas week, um, it's going to be pretty tight to get an MOT in the first place, so chances of getting one are pretty slim. Also, once I've taken it and on the off chance actually passes, I'm going to have to tax it to drive it home. And I don't want to tax it for just one week of the month. So I'm going to sit on the MOT until January. So it's only like two weeks away. It gives me two weeks to just continue making the thing as nice as possible. So right, thank you much indeed for watching. Do appreciate your time and uh, your patience. Uh, please hit like and subscribe if you have liked this and would like to subscribe and see more. It makes a massive difference to these channels if you do that kind of thing. YouTube really takes those analytics seriously. If you want to support the channel, please think about becoming a channel Patreon or member, which puts cash in the hands of the channel to go and buy stuff because there's plenty to buy uh, for cars like these, unfortunately. And if you want to send me junk to read in the mail time uh, post bag feature, then please do. The address is in the description below. Uh, so thank you for your time, patience, and understanding, and just, yeah, sympathy, really. Uh, join me again in a couple of days time when I'm going to carry on with the many jobs that are still waiting to make this car nice and I'm also going to get on with the V8 and maybe even a bit of the Mercedes and the Mini and the Volvo. Oh, it's too much to do. I'll see you next time.